more meat from the power of the Holy Spirit of God. In the book of Revelation 12 and 1, clearly we see in this book, the woman, Jerusalem. Galatians 4 and 26, the Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. The woman's glory is the glory of the sun, the moon, and the stars in 1 Corinthians 15 and 41 because we know that God's glory had left this place. We know she is in travail and pain to be delivered. So she is a woman of sorrow. So she is waiting for the man-child, which is Jesus Christ, to take his seat. Now we know that when God created Adam, he put Adam, the man-child, in his seat of this kingdom. Here we go, church. In the book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8, we see that in the future that Jerusalem, this great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. So we know that spiritually she is corruption. That is the reason why she is in travail. She is in sorrow and pain to be delivered because she is corrupted. The Holy Spirit of God took me in a quick vision, and in the vision, the Holy Spirit asked me, did I see the connection here between the dragon and the Jerusalem? That these are two wonders. How Jerusalem, the woman is a wonder, the dragon is a wonder, and then we see the false prophet is there also. So we see that by the book of Revelation 12 and 1 through 4, they are all together. And we imagine that they are divided. One after all, they are not divided. We see that this place is the kingdom of the beast. That he is sitting in this Jerusalem, this third heaven, ruling and reigning with his power and authority. Only do we see war that he is cast out. And that's the reason why on earth he does the exact same thing. He connects himself with Jerusalem because after all, he said to Jesus that the kingdoms of the world were his. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. So therefore, Jerusalem on earth belongs to him also until Christ rules and reigns for 1,000 years. 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. So the vision that the Holy Spirit of God took me in allowed me to see the connection that they are all together. So the beast is the wonder in heaven is showing him a wonder. Here we go, church. Let me get to it. I hear the Holy Spirit of God telling me to get to this. The dragon has kept guard watch over the woman that's in sorrow and travail and pain to be delivered because he already knew by the book of Genesis 3 and 15 that a deliverer is coming through her, the one that would bruise the serpent's head of power and great authority. So he, being king there, because he took from Adam, and Adam was a king and a priest, so I can imagine that the enemy is showing himself to be that king and priest that's ruling and reigning over that third heaven. The devil knows that the, the man, child, the son of God will deliver them. He knows that because God told him that. So he is very much aware of the future of what is coming. In Revelation 12 and 4, we see clearly the power of church and state joined together in this Jerusalem. Jerusalem being the place that is religious, representing the church, representing the woman, uh, the woman that's in travail. So clearly in Revelation 12 and 4, and from Revelation 12 and 1 through 4, we see clearly the power of the dragon's power of church and state joined together in one through the authority. Here we go, church. The beast of the sea, the dragon's crowns. The dragon is showing himself to be king of kings. He has seven crowns, which are seven kings. He has a crown. The dragon is crowned. He has a crown, seven crowns 
Uh, he has seven kings, showing himself to be king of kings. Revelation 12 and 3. And verse 4. Clearly the tale reveals to us that all of these, the power of church, the power of state, of government, is joined together in the body of the beast. They are all members of his body. The tale is the false prophet, the beast of the earth. Matthew 24 and 11, Jesus warned us of false prophets that will deceive many. In the book of Isaiah 9 and 15, Isaiah tells us that the head, well, the dragon has ten horns, but he has seven heads. Those seven heads represent the ancient. Isaiah 9 and 15 said the ancient is the head, and the tail is the prophet that teaches lies. He is the tail, Deuteronomy 13 and 12, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 13, 1 and 2. Revelation 13 and 13, he causes fire to come down from heaven. This is a strong delusion to deceive the people in Jerusalem and on the earth that this is the prophet Elijah that was supposed to prepare the way for the Messiah. You see, it's all great deception that the dragon is using to deceive the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy tells us if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives the, the sign, gives thee a sign or a wonder and it comes to pass, he's causing fire down from heaven, church. And he tells us to go after another God which you have not known and let us serve them. Here we go, church. The butter and the honey on the bread and the meat in due season. In the book of Revelation, chapter 10 and verse 5, John said that he saw an angel. He said, I saw an angel stand upon the sea and upon the earth. And he lifted up his hand. Now here we go, church. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, what did you see here, my friend? And I, when he says that, I know I'm to pay attention. That I missed something. See, I was flowing with him with the crowns. But when he got here, this is where he stopped me and he said, What do you see, my friend? And I said, My Lord, what am I to see here in Revelation 10 and 5? He said, Pay attention to what John saw. He said, I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth. He said, Do you not remember in the book of Ephesians 6 and 14? Standing. Therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, in Revelation 10 and 5, John said, I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth. Romans 16 and 20, The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. In the book of Luke 20, 34 through 36, those that are found worthy to attain the world that's coming. Those that are raised from the dead are equal to the angels. Here John saw under the feet of the angel the enemies of God. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the church. You see, the beast of the sea, the beast of the earth, is the enemies of God, Jesus Christ, the word of God, and the church. It was promised in Genesis 3 and 15. When we put on that whole armor of God, we are winning that victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why the word in Ephesians 6 and 14 says, Stand! Standing in the truth that we will stand with the enemies of God Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and the church being put under our feet. That's amazing revelation. Knowledge, Ephesians 6 and 16 says, Stand, girded with truth, knowing the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Ephesians 6 and 15, Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 
talking about Jesus and his kingdom and the power of his government. His government will be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Read also verse 7, Establish Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of David that will be no end and no end to his kingdom. He will order it. He will establish it and with judgment and justice forever. Amazing revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. The false prophet, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, the son of perdition, the false Christ, they are coming after the working of Satan with power, signs, and lying wonders. Revelation 12 and 3, there appeared in heaven another wonder. Wait a minute. We were just warned about the lion wonder. The dragon is a lion wonder. There appeared in heaven another wonder. Behold, the great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his seven he heads, seven crowns. And the names of blasphemy. Now, church, I want to share something with you. Well, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit tell me, wait, say this first. Let me be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God because this is not me that's doing this. It's the Holy Spirit. So let me yield up my body to the Holy Spirit. Revelation 12 and 3, we see the wonder. We see the seven crowns. We see the seven heads. This is what we are to pay attention to. With the names of blasphemy. Revelation 17 and 3. Revelation 13 and 1. This is a religious offense. Revelation 2 and 9, the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews, and they are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2 and 2, who call themselves apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars. 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 14 and 15. It is no marvel Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing for his ministers transform themselves as the ministers of righteousness who end shall be according to their work. Their end will be what their works deserve. They are wolves in sheep clothing. Having a form of godliness but denying the powers there. Of. Second Timothy 3 and 5 warned us of the last days. They are those having the form of godliness, but denying the powers thereof. They present themselves as godly, but it's all for show. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 4, a very long list of sinful nature of the people in the last days. And warning to avoid them. Those that try to deceive others by their appearance. They appear godly. They are wearing the uniform of Jesus Christ, claiming to be Christ-like. Their lives, they are living, they are dishonoring the name of Jesus Christ. The outward appearance, they appear godly, but inside they are full of dead men's bones. They never can come to the knowledge of the truth. They are wicked magicians who oppose Moses and warn that their corruptible minds will be revealed to all eventually. The ministers transformed are strong delusions. Church, make no mistakes about it. It is a strong delusion. Now, Back to the seven heads. When I was doing this study with the Holy Spirit of God and as we were flowing in through the Spirit, He always allows me to see a vision. Those heads, listen to me church, this is what I saw in the vision when I was with the Holy Spirit of God and it is an amazing vision. In the vision, I saw the mystery Babylon. The, the religious system in the future. And those seven crowns 
those seven kings, those seven heads are the heads of that religious system. They are joined to the beast. They are the powers of church and state. The Holy Spirit of God said to me into the vision when I was looking at the mystery Babylon and beholding those seven heads, the ancient, the heads of the church, and that's what they are. They are the seven heads. Remember, church, in the last days when we're ruling and reigning with Christ in Revelation 20 and 4, he will make us kings and priests. Do you think the devil cannot copy the things of God? That he has not taken the third heaven and sitting in the holy place of God already? That he stole from Adam? And the seven heads and the seven crowns are showing that devil to be king of kings. And you... You have never, ever entered into your thought. And even when I saw the vision, I said to the Holy Spirit, My Lord, I never made that connection with the seven heads of seven crowns being connected to that religious system. And he said, Yes, my friend, do not forget that they will be made kings and priests. The reason why the devil desires the spiritual things of God is to establish his own kingdom, set himself in the seat of God, showing himself to be king of kings and lord of lords, that he holds the power of the kingdoms. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me in that vision, and this is what he said to me, church, and I tell you, it gave me cold chills when he was speaking to me in the vision. I could feel the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It was amazing. He said, did you notice something, my friend? It is not the ten horns that are joined. They have an appearance that they are joined with the beast. And you will see in Revelation 17 how God himself influences these kings. These kings that are not kings yet but will receive power one hour with the beast. In that one hour, God influences these horns to burn this religious system. But did you notice something? It is not the heads that join in the attack because they are the heads of the beast, the crowns, those that have been made kings and priests in this religious system. See, they're joined to the beast through the woman. They are the seven kings, seven crowns. They are connected to the religious system. They are not joined with the horns when the horns rise up against the mystery Babylon. When the woman is burned, she is attacked by the kings that have power one hour with the beast. You do not see the seven crowns, the seven heads, because they are being burned with the religious system because they are connected to the woman. And I said, I never saw that connection, my Lord, until the vision, until I beheld the vision. And the vision was amazing, church. And I know the Holy Spirit takes me in visions to establish His Word, and it is amazing. But when he was talking, I could not make that connection that he wanted me to see. But then when I saw the vision, I clearly could see the connection of what the devil had done and how in the beginning he was only made king and priest through by what he stole from Adam. But we even see in the book of Ezekiel 28 and 13 and 14, the anointed cherub that covereth was made a king and a priest. It says he was a king. We see that his breastplate is the breastplate of a priest. So, that means that before he fell, before man was ever created, before 
Adam ever came into creation, God had already made the anointed cherub a king and a priest. So what he once was, he really wasn't taking anything from Adam because he was already made a king and a priest in the beginning. But here's the thing that he needed to do because he was driven out. He fell from heaven. So when he went back into the third heaven, he was only taking back what he lost. And he overpowered Adam and the church by them being childlike. He took advantage of them being childlike. So when they fell, he just regained what he had lost. Because God had already made him a king and a priest. That's in the book of Ezekiel 28, 13, and 14. The anointed cherub was a king and he was a priest. So can you imagine? But listen, God did not give him dominion over all the earth. He just made him a king and a priest over a place in heaven before his fall. But he knew that God gave the man because the man was of the earth. He was taken out of the earth. So he gave Adam more dominion, more power than those that fell in the beginning that were kings and priests. See, they were only made kings over one kingdom. But he knew that God had made man in his own image, in his own likeness, because only God had power and great authority over all the earth, over all of the heavens. And that's the reason why the devil wanted Adam's kingdom. Because Adam was crowned. He was made a king and a priest, and God gave him dominion over the earth so that meant that Adam's reign had power even over the anointed cherub's place that God made him king and priest that he was to worship Adam because Adam had more power and, and authority in his rule and his reign I tell you what that's why we see in the book of first Cor no no yes 1 Corinthians 15 and 24, the reason why the last Adam, Jesus Christ, has to sit upon that throne of David. He has to sit upon that throne in that third heaven. He has to sit there and he has to rule and reign for one day, which Adam fell in a day. He did not fulfill that day. He did not finish that day. And after that thousand years has finished, Christ truly has taken back all the dominion, all the power, and all the authority that the devil stole from Adam because Adam, it was given to him by God because God wanted this man who was made of the earth because, see, the anointed cherub was not made of the earth. He is not an earth being. He is not flesh and blood. But God took a man, created a man, to give him who was made lower than the angels, and highly exalted him. But did you notice something? He only gave Adam dominion over the world that he was created of. The fallen beings were not created out of the earth. Remember, they are heavenly beings. So God did not give them all that power and authority and dominion over the earth because they were not created out of the earth. He gave that power and dominion to the one that he made out of the earth. And that's why Christ had to be, the word of God had to become man because to have the dominion over the earth, he had to be of the earth, made out of the dust of the earth. I told the Holy Spirit, now that's some stuff. If it gets any better than that, I really don't think I'm going to be able to take it. I always tell him, I don't think you're going to be able to... Uh, Bring power, revelation to the next word. And he always tells me, just wait. 
there is always deeper and higher places in God. Because the revelation knowledge he gives me, I think it's just amazing. That is there more beyond that? Because that's my fleshly thinking. And he always wants me to know, yes, they are always deeper and higher places in God. And I'm always rejoicing and thankful for the revelation knowledge and the enlightenment that he has already given to me. And I cannot comprehend that there is so much more even beyond that. And it is. Because I know that in my spirit, and the Holy Spirit bears witness with me, that there is always so much more. Deeper and higher places in God. But it was the vision that he, he brought me to that connected. That Because how, how would it not connect it? Because I'm a looking at it. I see the woman, and I see the dragon, and I see the powers of those that were made priests and kings, and not knowing it. And then when I saw it in the vision, I said to the Holy Spirit, Oh my, those seven heads are connected to the religious system, to the church. He said, yes. That's why you don't see the seven kings with the seven heads, which are made kings and priests. They are part of the religious system. It is the horns that have no connection to that church at all. They are the powers of state. So we see that even in the days of the beast and the son of perdition, that the government of the beast that truly is upon his shoulders, that he is carrying the government upon his shoulders, is the most powerful of all. Even more powerful and greater in authority than the religious system. Apparently in those days that religious system thought that they had more power than the state. And the state, the government of the beast, uh, had to let them know. And that's the reason why they burned her. Because they didn't need her any longer. Ain't that some stuff, church? I'm a telling you, that is the good stuff right there. And the vision... If you only can have a vision, truly without a vision, the people perish. It is the vision that edifies the word of God. It just brought more life and understanding to it in the Holy Spirit. And when, I love it whenever he said, did you see that? And then when he's showing me the word and he says, did you see that? I always know I am to pay attention because the stand that we are making in Ephesians that he says, when you done done all you can do, stand. Having your loins girded about with truth because he knows where we're going to be standing, church. We're going to be standing upon the powers and the authority of the enemy that's being delivered to us because it is promised our enemies will be bruised under our feet. I said to the Holy Spirit, I didn't see that one. I did not see that one, my Lord, that we are standing with our enemies under our feet. He said, that's right. You already won the victory. And the devil knows that in Genesis 3 and 15, that his powers of authority will be bruised under your feet because you are standing upon the enemy. All of his power, all of his great authority will be under the feet of Jesus Christ and under the feet of the church. I said, I always thought stand meant we were going to stand and not bow down to the enemy. He said, no, your enemies will be bowing down to you. And your enemy will be under your feet. He said, is that not what Revelation 10 and 5 and John is trying to make it so clear to you that that is what he saw? An angel stand on the sea, the sea beast, the powers of the government, and the beast of the earth, the religious system. Remember Revelation 13 and 11, the lamb with two horns, 
He rose up out of the earth. That's the religious system. The church and Jesus Christ has conquered all the enemies and even death is under your feet. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26. Everything has been given to Jesus Christ and the church. All the power, all the authority delivered back up to God who will be your king and rule and reign over you, with you, forever. I said, I don't think it gets any better than that, my Lord. If it did, I don't think I could take it. This is amazing revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God and church. This is just a drop in the bucket because I got so much more because the Holy Spirit of God has just been flooding my spirit. Yesterday I stayed in the presence of God and he went from one revelation knowledge to another revelation knowledge. Oh my goodness. My notebook is filled with revelation knowledge. Even my husband who was watching me doing the study with the Holy Spirit of God, he said, he's giving you another revelation knowledge. I said, I don't have time to talk. I've got to flow with the Holy Spirit. Then after that revelation knowledge was finished, he gave me another one, and I was in the Word all day long in the presence of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God as he was pouring in the oil and the wine. And I have so much to tell you. And I still haven't even told you all of the things that I already knew before. But he daily is just pouring in the wine of the New Testament. It is amazing. It is just so amazing, church. I mean it. I always wonder if I'm glowing because to be in the presence of God uh, that even the flesh is changed, transformed, and truly the more we are in the presence of God we die to this flesh. And when we die to this flesh that means that I don't have to do anything. That just being in His presence He is killing off this flesh. And it is dying daily because I am in His presence daily. I'm telling you, church, he is doing a mighty work. And I am certainly seeing what the angel was establishing with me many months ago when he said to move to into the presence, to move into this new place that God wanted me to be. I had to show God something about me, and I had to be willing to transform a room. And I did exactly everything according to the words of the angel of the Lord. And here I am bearing the fruit of what was given to me if I was willing to do the work. Remember that, church? I know you'll all remember it, that I had to be willing alone to do the work. And I tell you what, it is a mighty work indeed. But it is not my work, church. It is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. It is him that is pouring out this amazing revelation knowledge. He's just using me as a vessel to do it. But I am honored to be the vessel of the Lord. I am honored and blessed. Have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. Church, I want to tell you that the revelation knowledge that is revealed to me and the visions, they change me. That may sound strange to you, but it, I am feel like the clay in the potter's hands that is molding me and transforming me because I always feel more spiritual and less fleshly. As I'm walking more in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, it is amazing transformation. It really is. Truly, we go from glory to glory to glory. Amen. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, church. Have a blessed day today.